Welcome back. So what is a context? Well, first of all, if we look at our code right now, we have something called the fake DB. Now the fake DB in our setup right now is actually the database. It's actually the database inside memory that we made ourselves, right? But the context inside the NT framework, that's a way for us to kind of explain or map to an SQL database how the table should work, what should happen. And it's actually also a way for us to configure our models, uh, manage the database connection, query the database, save data to the database, configure change tracking, cache the database, transaction management, ooh, transactions, we like that. So there's a lot of things we can do with the context, but think of it this way. Before we had a fake database that was made for simple lists, now we're going to have a context that can now talk to a real database, but it kind of has this, it has the same information that our fake database did, just with a lot more power, right? So the context is kind of our fake database on steroids. <laughs> that's the guy that's going to talk to our SQL database and it's able to do all these beautiful things for us. So that's what we're going to make. Let's make a DB context for our system and I'm just going to call mine, uh, it's just going to be a simple class. Let me try and show you. Jumping in here, let's jump into our project and I'm just going to put this in the root because I think that's where it belongs. So under our infrastructure data project, notice it's not under the static project, it's under the new one. We say add, we say class, and it's going to be called customer app context. Now you can pick any name right here, it's just, it's just a class, right? So I'll say okay to this, but it is important that when you do add this, it's important that you make it implement something called the DB context, right? Now this guy is available because we just added the .NET Core that we just found and added with NuGet Packages last uh, lesson, right? So now we can add this DB context right here and pretty much means that now this is a database context. Pretty easy, right? Pretty easy. But right now the context doesn't explain to me what kind of tables I want in my database. So let's jump back to the fake database just to show you that. Right now the fake database at least knows there's a list of customers and there's a list of orders. But my context doesn't know that. So how will I explain to a context that I have a list of uh, customers and orders in my database or a table actually of customers and a table of orders in the database? Well, there's a pretty neat thing right here. We can call something called the DB set, this guy. And there we can explain to the system that I'm going to have a list of customers or a table of customers. We can do it even easier because I'll just say prop right here, prop. I'll tap and I'll say DB set. And I explain this will be my DB set of customers. Now notice it doesn't know about customers. We need a dependency, of course. So I'll just add the dependencies, add references for both core and core entity. We're going to need both. I'll say okay. Now after adding that relation, I should now be able to, if I instead of say customers, that's of course only a customer. Sorry, I put in the wrong name there. There we go. So now it knows that I can get a list of customers. Now the final thing I need to do is explain to the system what I want to call this table, and I'm going to call my table the customers table. Seems to make sense as it's a table of customers, right? So what do we do next? Well, I want another property in here. I want another list of entities inside my table or rows inside my table. So I'll make another prop right here, double tap. It'll be a DB set. It'll be order instead of customers. And it'll call it, I just want to call it orders as well. Orders, there we go. So now I've pretty much made my tables and prepared to work with them. That's all you have to do. Now there's a lot more we need to do later, but this is just now using this context, I've just explained to my database that it's going to build later that it needs two tables. It needs a table called customers and it needs a table called orders, right? So that's kind of the way that you can explain using the DB context what you need in the tables. But I've explained a lot more than that already. I've also explained, if you jump into the actual customer right here, I've also explained that the customer needs a column called ID, that's an int, a first name, that's a string, last name, that's a string, blah, blah, blah. And it actually also needs some kind of relation between customer and an order, right? So pretty much meaning that there's a relation between these two and that's also explained right now that these guys have a relation. We'll dive more into it, but look at how simple that was. So I've used the context now to explain that when I create my table soon, I want two tables, I want these relations, I want these columns and now I'm ready to add some data in the different rows, right? So that's the power of a context. And now we've, we've implemented it, so now we can start using all of these mad 
crazy things that we want to do. And of course, they also made a great example right here of the context. Now, we'll get back to these functions later. Don't put them in there yet. We'll also get a constructor later. Don't put it in there yet. So there's a lot of great information here about the context and what you can use it for. And we're going to start diving into all of that. But now you have a context ready inside your infrastructure. That's it for this lesson. See you next time. Have fun.